Hi, welcome to Power Logic Labs. We're going to be building the power circuit. You will need the following parts. You will need a 9 volt battery connector. You will need the 78 MO5 voltage regulator. This converts 9 volts to 5 volts. Your electronics runs on 9 on 5 volts. If you put 9 volts in it, you will destroy your parts and you do not have enough replacements. You'll be very unhappy. You'll have to go buy your own parts. If you'd rather not do that, use a 9 volt regulator. It will convert your voltage from 9 volts to 5 volts and protect your parts. This here is this black device here with a single stripe, a little silver stripe here. This one here says 1N4007 on here. Uh, you can use any part that says 1N4007 one to 4,007. The seven means it's rated for 1,000 volts. Uh, the 4,001 is rated for 50 volts, and uh, the numbers are all in between. Uh, this here is a one kilo ohm resistor, a 1,000 ohm resistor. That is brown, black, red, gold. Brown is one, black is zero, red is, means two zeros. So you read that as 10 with, excuse me, red is three, excuse me. So this here is a one kilo ohm resistor. This is brown, black, red. Brown is one, black is zero, red is two. So you read this as one, zero, and two more zeros. So that makes it a thousand. And gold means 5%, which means it can be off by plus or minus 5%. So 5% of a thousand is plus or minus 50. So if you were to take an ohm meter and read this between these two lines here, it would be either 950 to 1050. You will need a switch. This here is a little on off, a little double pole single throw single throw because you only have one group of one set of wires here this the center wire really either connect to here which is how this switch is set up right now or you would slide it to here and these two wires would be connected these over here are capacitors uh, this one here is rated 104 and these do not have a polarity. These small devices typically do not have a polarity. So you can put them in either way. Resistors do not have a polarity. And the diode has a polarity. You must put that in in the correct way. Um, for more information, you can go look up the data sheet. The data sheet could be found at Google. And at Google, you would type in 1N4004 space data sheet space dot PDF. And for this device here, uh, the 5 volt regulator, you would do um, Google 78M05 or 7805 uh, space data sheet space dot PDF, and you'll find you'll find some uh, data sheets on that. Um, these here. There's three different part numbers that would all be acceptable. These are the smaller of, of them. Uh, these here are rated for half a watt, which means uh, they, they can handle a half a watt of power. These are Zener diodes. These are special diodes. On a Zener diode, it works by clamping when it reaches a Zener, Zener voltage. And you set these up by being reverse polarized. So this black, this stripe right here is actually going to go to the positive side. If you hook these up backwards, they'll conduct like a regular diode like this device here. This device conducts in one direction. I forgot to bring that up. So a diode works as a one-way device and current only flows this way. When you go this way, nothing happens. No electricity flows through. The electrons just stop. It opens up so nothing goes through. So in a regular diode, the current flows all the way through. 
but this device, like all electronic devices, consumes a little bit of power. This will drop 0.7 volts. The maximum current through this device is 1 amp. So at 1 amp, you'll see 0.7 volts drop from here to here. This is the minus on this device. Um, in this case, on the Zener diodes, when you go in this direction, when you go this way here, the part number on this is a 1N751. A or a 1N5231A or 1N4733A. Uh, all, all three of those parts are the same type. So voltage will flow across here. This will drop 0.7 volts from here to here. But when you run it backwards like this, with this side being a plus, from here to here, it will it will actually drop 5.1 volts. At 5.1 volts, will start to conduct, and uh, it was, this will conduct up to a uh, fairly high voltage until they melt. So um, we will handle 9 volts without a problem. What's really cool about this is these will not turn on as long as this is working correctly. If you were to hook your battery up directly to the power rails for your uh, chips, these will all, the four of these will turn on because you're going to be putting four of them in. Uh, they'll turn on and they'll protect your circuit from either hooking the battery up backwards or hooking the battery up in the wrong place. Um, what will happen is these will turn on and they'll make your 9 volt battery a 5 volt battery. Your battery will get hot, these will get hot, but your chips will survive. If you plug, if you hook your battery up directly to the to the power rails backwards, these will all turn on and they'll drop 0.7 volts and your and your chips will all survive. So uh, that's that's why we're installing the protection because um, stuff happens. So let's see. Last part here is an LED. LED stands for light emitting diode. We talked about these devices here. This here is very similar, except this spits out photons. Kind of like photon torpedoes in Star Trek. Close. Uh, photons turn out to be electrons that are liberated at, at, at uh, specific frequencies. So this here spits out photons, and you can actually see them. Uh, because that's, that's how this device. These here, here actually emit photons too, but they're at uh, different frequencies, which we can't see. And uh, it's very, 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 very weak. But these are designed, these have been figured, we figured these out, how to spit these out uh, at specific frequencies. Red was the first color, and that was uh, designed by Hewlett Packard a long time ago, in the late 60s. Uh, a, a interesting story, the uh, Japanese scientist who figured out how to make white, if you look inside, directly inside the white LED, you'll see a colored blob. That colored blob turns out to be um, photo, photosensitive material or fluorescing material like, uh, like inside of fluorescent light. And that's exactly how this worked. The gentleman who figured this out, the Japanese gentleman, he got a patent on it for um, uh, Nichon and Nichon gave him exactly $100. For his patent, the company made billions selling the licensing. That's a that's slightly a sad story, but uh, so negotiate your contract carefully, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so you see we have this marked. We mark this with black pen. Remember, if you don't mark your LEDs and you come and ask for help, and you got an, and we see you don't have them marked, and you're saying your LEDs don't light up, we're just going to say, sorry, can't help you. So make sure you mark your LEDs before you especially before you cut them. All right, so now, now you know what parts to look for. Um, you need one of these, four of these, two of these, and one of, one of everything else. Okay, so let's begin the build.
So before we build this, let's talk a little bit about what's going to happen. We're going to be building this circuit right here just to go through the parts. Again, you have the 9 volt battery clip. You're going to go through the switch. When you turn the switch on, the electrons are going to flow through this device. This is a one way device. If you hook this up backwards, this will not turn on, which is good because it would be backwards and that would be unhappiness. This here is a capacitor. We're going to use, be using the uh, 0.1 microfarad, marked as 1. Or excuse me, 104. Uh, this here is a 5 volt regulator. So you're going to have 9 volts coming in, 5 volts coming out, and it needs to know what it's attached to. So you have ground as a reference. This, just so you know, this dot means it's connected. So all of this stuff right here is all connected on the bottom, and these are all connected here, and everything goes through this device. This part here acts like a little tiny miniature battery. So the um, so when, when there's a rising power draw, this thing will supply that. This also prevents this device from oscillating, which means it will ring and uh, make noise, and that would be very, very bad. So that's why you have uh, the capacitor on the input and the capacitor on the output. This here is a, a diode, a light emitting diode. We're going to use, I have blue here, but we change this to white. So this will be a white LED and a one kilo ohm resistor. And then these are your zener diodes. You notice the bands are in the, different, in the opposite direction. That's normally. Typically on a diode, the arrow is the direction that the current flows at the that the uh, the current flows on the zener diodes we have them wired up backwards so when they turn on they uh, will only turn on at 5 5.1 volts which is higher than the output of this voltage so these hopefully will never turn on if you were to take your battery and hook it up to the 5 volt rail these here are what will protect your your circuit. Also, if you hook these up, if you hook uh, your rail up backwards, or you hook the battery up to it by X and end backwards, these here will protect your uh, parts from going poof. Uh, you'll let the genie out. I'll talk about the genie in one of the next videos. Uh, the genie is the true story of electricity. So here we go. All right, so. This is your schematic. I highly recommend you print it out in color so you get the full experience here. It's important It's important to help you see what you're connecting up and where everything is, is getting connected. All right. Over here, this describes how and what to look for on an LED. Remember, uh, I had you wire up, the, you know, put a black stripe on the short wire because you're going to be cutting these and you're, it's going to be hard to figure it out. There's a little flat spot right here on the LED. Um, you just have to look at it close and you'll see them. Okay, so let's begin the actual build. Uh, this here is a voltage regulator, this 78MO5. What it does is it takes your 9 volt battery and gives it a haircut and turns it into 5 volts. All these parts that are on your board do not like more than 5 volts. So if you hook your 9 volt battery up to it, you'll more than likely destroy a lot of parts. You'll certainly destroy this part and also your other one. We're going to take from the 9 volt, or excuse me, the 5 volt regulator is input, ground, output. So we're going to put the 9 volts coming in, but we're going to put it through this device here. The diode is a check valve, so it only lets current flow this way. And then uh, this here is the ground, and that's going to be your output, which will be 5 volts. So 9, ground, 5 volts. And we're going to hook all that up nicely. So what I wound up doing is I brought this ground from here. Actually, let's use this as a reference point. From this row here, I'm jumping over one so I can get this to work nicely. Uh, and more importantly, we're going to plug our 9-volt battery in. You, By now, you should already have this done. This is the 9-volt battery clip. And we're going to plug the 9-volt battery clip in. Uh, I covered it with some hot glue so it doesn't break apart. Um, you plug that in just like that, and that will allow you to turn this on. 
like so, nice and bright, really bright. The way the circuit works is, this here is providing ground, this little jumper right here is going to jump it and provide it into the ground on, on the voltage regulator. So we'll call this our starting point, and our other starting point is 9 volts. It goes through the switch, when you slide the switch over in the other direction, it provides connection from here to here, from column 1 to column 2, goes through the diode, through the voltage radio and generates 5 volts and turns out I put this in the wrong spot so I gotta figure out where to put this so we come out of here 5 volts and it's gonna split it's gonna go up into this bus which then goes into, goes into the rest of the board and it comes down through this here the LED gets activated and then from that it t this jumper here brings it to the bottom here for your uh, infrastructure all right, and that's pretty much how that works. Uh, this device here, the capacitor, it provides a little bit of stabilization. This device here, if it gets in a bad mood, it will oscillate. And you don't want that thing oscillating. Um, so a little bit of capacitance helps that problem. This here is a uh, breadboard. We're gonna, I'm gonna kind of build out the uh, power supply part of the circuit. So when you do the power supply circuit, it's really important that you follow these steps exactly because this is the foundation for your entire project. Alright, so we have our parts for our... So we have our parts for our uh, power build, power supply, and now we're going to begin the build. First thing we're going to do is you're going to take the 5 volt regulator, the 78M05. See that? Yep, 78M05 CT. Uh, the important numbers here are the 78 and the 05, which makes it a 5 volt regulator. And I'm going to hold it here. Uh, real important, you don't stress the part wires going into the chip so I'm just holding it like that and you see I got a bend on it almost 90 degrees and made a full 90 degrees and I'm gonna set this down over here so you can see so that's fairly straight if you get it nice and straight it will there you go nice and straight and we're gonna put this in here right here at two three and four J in the first breadboard and you just push that in all the way nice and firmly and maybe a little bend to the to the left because I want to access the this hole and that hole second part is the senior diode and you can see the numbers on there this here part is a 1 and 4,000 something uh, for this is a 4,007 as you can see So, reading the numbers over here this is the band that's the direction that it runs at so electricity flows through this way but not the not this me. electricity flows through this way but not this way so you just gently bend it like this like this and now I'm going to cut this to the correct length uh, it's really important that you cut everything the correct length would be 3 eighths of an inch if you were to plug this in and you don't make it 3 eighths of an inch it will go through the metal and all the way to the base and into this metal plate right here and that's really hard to debug that problem so I'm going to cut this 3 eighths of an inch one easy way to figure out what 3 eighths of an inch is, is using the holes here. So, position one. If you make it three holes, three or four holes, that's fine. There we go. So, you can see that's about four holes. And that's just fine. Just to show you, I'm going to... how deep that is 
Right, as long as it doesn't get down to the bottom, close to the bottom, that's a good thing. And this is going to go into 2F and 2E, and the band is going to go in the in the uh, F side. So, yep. The next thing is is your uh, one k ohm resistor. That would be the brown, brown, black, red, and and I'm gonna cut it. And so here we are. Brown, black, red is this. Here's a one kilo ohm. Brown is one. Black is zero. And red means add two more zeros. This does not have a polarity, so it does not matter which side you plug it into which direction. We're going to put this in 3F and I put it in D. You can put it in E or D. Uh, D is better. Alright, we have our white LED right here and I did not put a black stripe on it so let me put a black stripe on this so you guys can recognize that. Remember the flat spot, if you look really closely you can see a flat spot there and the big hint is the short wire is the minus, so that's where the flat spot is, and I just put that right there. And as you put on the ink, you'll actually feel it a little bit better. You'll feel the tip of it. So now, where I want you to cut these is just a little bit below. There's a, a crimp in the wires. You see how the color changes? The light. Let me see if I can get this up close. Move this out of the way. More contrast. Alright, so this one here is not a good one. Let me get a, another LED that's got that. So here's an, here's a, a bigger one, or a red one. So you see the, let me get it right in the focus. So you see right there, I want you to cut it right about there. Alright, so cut them just a little bit below the crimp, not too much more. Um, right about there. So, alright. I'm cutting it just below the crimp. And you want to save these, the, uh, the, the cuttings from the LEDs, because they're really nice wires for uh, one over jumpers and two over jumpers. And you're going to be using a lot of them. Uh, that way there you don't have to strip wire. Otherwise you're going to strip uh, more wire. And you'd rather not do that. Okay. Now, this is going to go right here. With the black stripe going in three. And the, that's the minus side. And the plus side of the LED going into four. The next thing you're going to do, we're going to take and put a red jumper to complete the circuit, and we're going to go from here to here. So we're going from 4F to 4E, and that turns out to be a jumper about 9. And what do I mean by 9? Okay, so I'm going to put this on the number 1 right here, and hold it down, and I'm going to put my, thumb, my, my nail right here on the 9. And give that a bend up so hey that's nine long I cut that up that's actually an eight use that somewhere else That's a nine. Strip the ends. When you strip the end, put it in your wire stripper in the 2224 spot. In the 22 spot, see where it says solid? So this is solid wire. So you're going to put it in the 22 right there. And you're going to pull. And you need to make sure that that is at least three. So I need a little bit more there. 
so that is three and then I'm going to do the same thing for this one here and that is three so there's my jumper now you notice the ends are a little bit a uh, uh, little bit uh, bent take your needle nose pliers and make them straight otherwise they don't go into the board well and over time you'll damage the fingers that are inside there trying to grab your wires <clears throat> I'm doing this with a fever I'll end up getting the cold that was running around this year um, I'm holding the wire gently and bending it and that made it nice and long and so this is okay to put it right there for this one here um, make that a little bit shorter on, the, on your other ones so I'm doing this with a 103 fever right now so please forgive me uh, doing the best I can alright so now we have power going from here to here and we need to get power to our bus so we're going to go from here to there and that is definitely going to be a nine so I need to go make that a nine cut that right here straighten the ends because crooked ends go in and damage the pins and also they're much harder to insert so that straightened it out pretty good you can bend these with your fingers of course you're getting a little small for me that size so. so I'm gonna put this one in the right swap these two out that worked perfectly for this one. There we go. So make that an eight and add a nine. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to jumper from here to here. Uh, excuse me. We're going to get. We're, I'm looking at the other board. Uh, the original board. Uh, we're going to jump her from H1 to H3. That's going to bring her ground to right here because that's how your 9 volt battery is going to hook up. And then from G3 to G5 we'll then bring the ground into this one here and then we're going to jump her from ground from here to here and from here to here. The reason why we're doing this is that it is a little bit of, a little convoluted but um, we're doing this to show you that the jumpers are needed to get across this barrier right here and also to show you how these connect so remember all of these are connected together so but th this is not connected to this so we're going to jump it over to here and then we're going to jump it to the ground bus or to the minus bus and that will energize this whole thing remember if you have a breadboard that has a um, don't panic do not panic this is a uh, this is actually uh, the f last the final part of the lab uh, if you have this part right here make sure you got the jumpers in and I'm truly sorry the camera's out of focus here all right so uh, first one is a little tiny one from Jimmy H one to three and then uh, three to five so we need two little short ones and uh, I'm gonna sidetrack here I'm gonna put the switch in welcome to working with a fever alright so the little switch is gonna go in row A one two and three and you're gonna wanna put a little bit of hot glue right down on that later on so we need a couple short jumpers you definitely want to put the do not use bare wire to do this um, 
the reason for that is uh, this is going to be a um, uh, let's make these sixes. The reason why you don't want to use a bare wire is because uh, something shorts out there, it's not going to be pretty, especially in the power supply area. Shorting out causes your battery to get drained. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm holding this close like this. So, see, you got it right on the insulation. That's, a, that's about what I want. So, let me see if I can get it in close enough. No, pretty good, but not quite. off that one. So one of the tricks you can do here is you can take a piece of insulation on, a, on a, another piece of wire and I'm gonna uh, you can take one of your insulation cuttings and you can slide it on the wire. We're gonna do that in uh, one of the later parts of this. You're gonna do put the insulation on the resistors. Alright so not exactly pretty, and that one doesn't even look good. That one's a little long. I'm just gonna make it a U-E, you know, make it U-ish, kind of shaped. There we go. All right, so this is going in each one and three, and that came out really nice. strip these one or three eighths long. If they're not three eighths you will not have a deep enough connection. Neither this one's a little bit short. Three eighths of an inch means you get a good connection, goes all the way into the end to the wire into the body of the board and gets you a nice healthy connection. Uh, that popped out. definitely work with a pair of needle nose pliers if you have big fingers. For those of you who are colorblind, uh, come see me. I have uh, a voltmeter. I'll loan you a voltmeter so you can read the read the values on the resistors. Alright, so we're going from, that was from G3 to G5, and now we have power moving into the 5 zone. Number 5... We're going to go from 5F to 5E, and that is an 8. Here's an 8. And then from 5... A to the minus bus on one. Yeah, this is number one, this is two, this is three, this is four power buses. <clears throat> so power bus one minus two five A. And that is a number eight. And I'm getting a lot of emails right now. And this here goes like that. Okay. There we go. So let me move this in a little bit to get a better focus. So and now let me hook up power. You have power up using your clip and 
so we have you, you should have soldered this already or if you're the online folks we're going to send them to you already soldered uh, so you have this is going to be the plus this is the minus and now we're going to plug this in and we should light up and we do voila congratulations so this is the first part next part is hooking up the buses next thing we're going to do is we're going to get power to this bus so we need to come out of the 5 volt which would be here number we're in column 4 and get to red bus 2 and then from 5J to the ground bus. We're going to come from here over and then to here so we need a nice little right angle into that. So I'm going to strip the wire three eighths of an inch long plug it in and then make sure it's all the way in this hole bend it over I'm going to put my fingernail right on it and give it a nice tug and that will allow me to get to right where I'm going then I'm going to put my fingernail on top of the uh, next one and that will get me there okay so this is about what it looks like see there's a little bend right there a little bend there Make sure you're on the same plane. So that's what the piece looks like. You'll see a little bend right there. And this should almost pop in. If we get it right, it pops in really easily. And that one came out nicely. I've been doing this a lot. I've done I've redone this portion a few times because I had video issues. Uh, so I'm getting to be quite the expert more so than normal so now we need to go from here let me use the, the black end so we need to go from 5 we're going to go from 5H to the bus right there the reason why I'm skipping this is there's a reason there's a part that's going to go right here so uh, we're going to go from here to here Plug that in and give it a little bend, make it pretty, and bend that up. Yeah, I got the bend there, and I pull it up. And just as a reminder, please make sure you clean up your workspace area. Uh, I do not appreciate having to clean up after people. This stuff makes a lot of mess. So you are, I expect you to clean up. If you don't clean up, what will happen is I will uh, revoke your owl card access to the room until you apologize to me for having to have to clean up after you. So I'd rather not watch the cameras to figure out who left me a mess. But that's just aggravating. So I can and will do it. I have done it to a few people. I'd rather not. I have other more important things to do than watch video cameras, see who left me a mess that I had to clean up. Alright, now I'm going to take a look at my old board here. Alright, so we're going to put a uh, red jumper. We're going to go red. Let me slide this over here. Get it nice. So at 55, we're going to go from re uh, red 2 to red 3. And then on the other side of this is ground, or the blue, or a black from here to here. So we're going to do the minus, and we're going to do the plus from here to here. So these turn out to be um, nines. I can just cut two nines.
Remember, strip them three eighths of an inch long, which would be three holes. So black to black, or ground to ground. Now, I made this a little bit short on one side, so what you can do, and I made this one a little bit longer to compensate for it, so you can just slide the insulation over, you see that? Bend. This is almost too short for me to use my fingernails. So now we need to get from this bus to this bus. So the trick for doing that is take two wires, make them 33s. I've done this one a lot. So I'm going to make this a 33. I've also built these boards for the professors. So, as you can see, that's a 33. Strip off three on each end. Now, the trick here is I'm just going to bend this a little bit like this and this and jam it into here and here straight in. And then I'm going to fold it over and tug this straight. And if you get it straight and nice, it loops around the back really nicely. So, there you go. pretty good. You can put a dab of hot glue right on that to hold it in place. Just put it, put the dab of hot glue right there and do not do a long run. Because if you have to troubleshoot and you're shorting out, you just pull one of these two out. And so. Alright, now this one here, I'm going to lift this up a little bit, the tab on the voltage regulator, and I'm going to jam it into this. This is the only side that the reason why I don't mind doing this is this tab is minus, this little metal tab is, is a minus, or the ground on the voltage regulator. Do not put the plus on, on that side. So, again, I'm going to bend it straight, stretch it and make it look good. Right, there we go. Now the buses are done. So we have power going from all from here to here. To here and to here. Now we need our Zener diodes, the little glass diodes. Um, cut them, cut them medium. Uh, and I got a big magnet here holding the camera up, and. Some of the wires here are magnetic and they just hopped right to the magnet. Alright, so here we go. Here's our Zener diodes. Zener diode is the only diode that works backwards from all the others. This stripe here goes to the plus. This is the only diode that you would do that. Uh, all the others would be going to the minor, to the lower side of the circuit. The reason for that is, if you hook this up to uh, the Zener diode, when it works in this direction, one more time, this direction, when the current is flowing that way, it is working like a regular diode, just like this. But the reverse direction, it works, uh, it doesn't turn on until 
the reaches the zener voltage. At the zener voltage, it turns on and it starts to conduct, and we'll try and hold that until the thing, until the device just blows up or shorts out. These here, you got to be careful about because sometimes if you overdo these, they'll fail in both modes, either open or closed. I've had them fail in the shorted mode and in the uh, open mode in both cases. Um, we had a power supply in production that wound up uh, on the startup when it first started up would send a big spike down the line and it wound up frying a lot of stuff especially the zener diodes so half the time the zener diode would do would, would do its job really well and short out which then would pop the fuse other times it said nah never mind <laughs> and uh, opened up and then the rest of our circuit would die um, in both cases it was not pretty that was a fairly expensive recall on the product line uh, turned out the uh, the, culpr the culprit was a, a bad capacitor a little tiny part alright so uh, I put this in at the junction right near 30 up here so let me move this up closer into really into focus for you uh, actually, yeah there we go uh, so you see I got the black I have the black stripe going to the red and then I have two more here, so I'm just going to cut these all the right length. What is the right length? I'm going to put this on the 20, so you can see it. There's a little part, my fingers aren't working well. So cut it, remember, cut them three long. I'm just gently folding them down. Remember, these are glass. So if you crunch, these will definitely crunch very easily. You have a couple spares. Right. Now, for the third bus, we'll put it in at the 30 again. Remember, the, the red goes to the, to the stripe. The stripe goes to the red. And on the second bus, I'm going to put this over by the 50. So this is going over at the 50. And then here at the, on the bus number one, at the 30. So now, and you can see I got lots of little parts here. we are now done so make sure all the black stripes are going to the reds that's really important otherwise it won't work right. now we're gonna hook up our battery I'm using my old battery connector my uh, one I made up failed all right so um, I pulled the, the the zener out let's first turn this on with the zeners in the correct direction all right so you see that's working and now I'm going to use pliers because it's going to get hot pretty quickly. So if you put this in backwards, watch what happens. Your light goes out. Okay, this is going to get a little warm, and this this thing's definitely going to get warm. So if if your light doesn't work, um, check your zeners first, make sure you have them wired up correctly, and then check your buses to make sure you have the jumpers wired correctly. Uh, do not work with power on. I'm doing this to demo, so just to show you I have that in the correct direction. All right, we've got to add two parts, so we're going to do that right now. Uh, power is off. Uh, these are capacitors, and this one is nicely magnetic. I've already cut this, so cut that uh, 3 eighths of an inch long. And this one here is going to go in... Let me use a pointer first. We're going to go from 1, which is a ground to 1J to 2I and you're going to need to bend the legs a little bit together to get it to go in so I'm going to give it a little push like that and that should be just enough to get it to go in and it is so now that provides a little bit of capacitance 
so this part does not oscillate. Oscillate would be generating uh, ringing and uh, making noise and uh, uh, unhappiness in your uh, input side. Uh, it generally doesn't happen too often, but I have seen it happen. We had that happen in a production run. Uh, it was a really expensive recall. Uh, it wasn't our fault, but it doesn't matter to the customer. The customer receives something that doesn't work. They're going to be rather crabby about that. I know I would be. Alright, so I cut this one. This one here is going to go from H4 to I5 right there. So we're going to go in these two holes right here. 